We became volunteer firefighters very impromptu yesterday, and I'll try to stay concise, but it was quite a weird experience, um, one that I'm kind of still processing. We were out for a walk, and usually we walk with the same neighbor, um, so we sent her a text, but there were all kind of cell issues yesterday. Thank God the emergency system doesn't rely on the same, the same, I don't know, towers, whatever. Thank God emergency calls were still going through, but the text didn't arrive. So when we got there, she wasn't ready, um, and her brother just happened to be out and walking. He lives on the same farm. It's actually the very first time we have walked with him and it turns out to be a godsend for two reasons. One, because he was he was irreplaceable help in what wound up happening. And she, because she always walks, has a lot more contacts in the neighborhood, which also wound up being a godsend. So it worked out very well that we just happened to have a flip of plan yesterday. So we were just walking as we usually do turn around and on our way back my daughter says at another neighbor's farm oh they're yelling and it's a family and sometimes we yell during chores sometimes simply because you're across 10 acres or across 20 or whatever you're, you're yelling from one field to another um other times you know animals get out i mean things happen so sometimes you yell during chores so it's like yeah sometimes we yell during chores and That's i didn't I think so. anything of it but now i realize so but we're about two strides from that and see smoke and uh, you know the human mind is pretty incredible at like just thinking everything's okay so my knee-jerk response is oh interesting a, a control burn and in you know I'm literally about halfway through a stride when I go no that's no that yelling is not normal that's not a control burn and so went charging up the hill and it was interesting because later I spoke to the friend we were walking to, sorry, walking with, and he said, yeah, my initial thought was, oh, interesting, a control burn. Like, he had almost the exact same words that we did. So um, I put that out there just in case, you know, you're ever passing an emergency. It's actually one of my majors is psych, and they've studied, you know, following disasters where somebody was there and could have done something and then asked, you know, well, why didn't you? And a lot of times it actually comes down to the, the person or people around thinking that things are under control um, because the human mind is very good at, oh, it's fine. <laughs> and when it's not, we went charging up the hill and as soon as we got there, realized, no, this was definitely not an intentional burn called 911 immediately and there were some hard frosts just a few days before and it seems like that or something else recent within the last few days damaged their water supply because the water pressure they should have had it was about half or less what it should have been we and we actually wound up abandoning the hose at some point because it literally wasn't doing as good a job as smothering it with shovels and rakes. So for about 30 minutes, shovels, rakes, boots, and jackets, we were running along the front of this trying to get in front of it. But the true front of it was, was going into a bunch of brambles and other things that we simply couldn't walk through. It was there was more than we could physically get through. So in about 30 minutes, it covered roughly four acres. That's pretty fast. And we were less than 200 yards from the wood line, from the forest line, when the fire department, thank God, made it. And they were able to get it put out with the water pressure we actually had about two-thirds of the fire put out by hand, by smothering, by stomping, by raking, etc., with just people. Um, but it did also turn out to be very lucky. I mean, um, the friend that we were walking with was absolutely incredible fighting the fire. Um, in fact, a handful of times I had, because I was going to the, to the left of, to his left, so he was advancing to the front ahead of me and I was making sure that the hot spots weren't popping back up. 
And a couple times he was nearly on fire because it was popping back up because he was trying to rush forward as fast as he could. And so I was coming behind with, you know, my jacket with boots, stomping it out to make sure that it wasn't reigniting as, as we went. Um, but he's incredibly fit. And so it, he, you know, that was, a, that was an unbelievable workout because we're running back and forth, running back and forth, smothering things, you know, digging up clay and just trying to get the fire out, stomping, running. It was nuts. It, it was nuts. Um, and thank God his sister happened to be home because, she, because she walks so regularly, she knows the most people in the neighborhood of any of the new people living here. So I, you know, called her as we were progressing along this line. And then she made a bunch of additional phone calls and, um, the fire department arrived just in time. There was like less than 200 yards left to the forest. They got it put out. Thank God it was never advancing in the direction of that family's home because that just, just thank God all things seemed to work out to be just okay. Just right. Um, but it was definitely a big lesson for me after the fact, thinking about if we don't have an evacuation plan for our animals. So that is high on my mind now, um, as is the fact that we have, it was broom sedge. It was broom sedge and briars that lit. And we have some around our property line and some very close to our forest. So a lot of it. We have a lot. So we are now very, very much wanting to get back behind there and cut by hand if we have to, to have a ideally 10 foot gap between, between those as a minimum. Um, it also definitely made me think more about a horse team because we can't get part of the reason why that forest connects every property in this area is because that is too steep to get typical heavy equipment on. So it would have to be a horse team to get back into their, um, I mean, some people use skid steers and get close enough to the slope and then, and then I guess a wench is what they're using, but it, it takes some very, it takes different setups. It's not your standard tractor to pull things out of the forest, but it definitely made me think far more seriously about how to get that cleared out. <laughs> 